Good morning. My name is Pastor Jeremy Shines, and this is I Am Loved Church. Let's pray. Father, bless this word. Lord, speak through these lips. Lord, wash us head to toe with your blood and your righteousness, your grace and goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. This message is going to be called Die for Something. Die for Something. Every day I wake up, I think to myself, and I've thought this in many different professions that I've tried. All right. I thought to myself, why am I here? <laughs> you know, when you've done something for so long, you start to question, you start to look out, even online and go, maybe there's something more to life than this. I have found that that is a circular journey or reason, <laughs> right? And in this picture, a circular reason is not a good one. And so what I did for the longest time is I jumped from college to college, girl to girl, right? Dating wise. I mean, I jumped from hobby to hobby, from location to location. I've jumped around a lot from profession to profession. And I've always come to the conclusion at some point or another, maybe there's more to life than her, or maybe there's more to life than doing this or being here, right? We're always looking outward at where life is and jesus says i am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me no one will truly be satisfied except through me right that's what jesus is saying being a pastor for the last four years has been the longest thing i've ever done being with my wife now for the last eight years has been the longest person I've ever been with. But I still always, from time to time, look outward and think, maybe there's more to life than being a pastor. Maybe there's more to life than being married to her. Maybe I should go find someone else. Maybe I should go find a different profession. What I've come to realize in that statement as I inspect that statement for the first time, I'm looking at that and I'm like, I've noticed that I'm never satisfied. I've noticed that I'm never satisfied. So I started doing some digging and I started doing some research. Check out this message. It's called on our YouTube. Uh, what is your why? What's your why? And I realized that my why was not founded upon the rock that Jesus talked about, right? He is the rock. My why was founded upon the sand. And if you notice anything about sand in this analogy that Jesus is talking about, he says, build your house on the rock, not the sand. For if you build your house on the sand, when the waves of life come by, that could represent demons, that could represent challenging situations, obviously, right, or scenarios. That could represent many things, financial crises or whatever. When that starts to come by, difficult people, you will need a why. You're going to need a, a good why. And hopefully your why is me, right? That I'm your why why you're married to that person. I'm your why, why you're doing that job. I'm your why, why you're doing this profession or whatever. Make sure that I'm your why. Because if I'm not your why, Jesus is saying, then you're gonna be like the sand, like everybody else. You're gonna go from job to job, relationship to relationship, location to location. You're never gonna be satisfied. You're always gonna be looking outward. Maybe I should do this. No, you'll start something new. And you can't build a family. You can't build a life. You can't build a career with that mindset if your why isn't Jesus. And part of that message that I spoke about, what's your why, deals with people serving others. 
right? That what we really want deep down inside, as I've done some research on this in myself with the Lord, obviously, and just thought these things through, what I realized is that I want a family. I was really obsessed with Navy SEAL stuff, kind of still am, but I like the type brotherhood that they have. I like how they're willing to die for one another. Do you hear what I'm saying? What are you willing to die for? That's your why. And the famous saying that we've all heard, if you are not willing to die for something, you will fall for anything. That's the illustration Jesus saying. If you're not willing to die for me, you'll fall for anything. Everything else aside from Jesus is vanity. It's empty. It's unsatisfying. Right? That's why I pursue Jesus. And there has some, been some excruciatingly difficult, hard seasons. Probably even more so than when I was, my why was based on the world. My why was based on all this changing stuff. Because in that stuff, you could just leave. You could just go home. You could just go find a different job, a different profession, a different spouse or whatever. But that's not what brings value to something. Wine is only valuable the longer it's spent fermenting. That means it's got to sit in the same space forever until it becomes really delicious. The most delicious things in the world take time. The most cheap things in the world take no time whatsoever, right? They're produced like that. Your marriage only really matters when it takes time to ferment. My love for my wife is growing bigger and better because I spent so much time with her. My love for this job, when I get through the bad seasons, and there are many, more than I like to admit, when we get through those, those jobs become better and more affirming, right? But a lot of people don't in their marriage or their job or whatever, or with people, they don't push through their relationships. They don't push through their job and their struggles. They don't push through the circumstances or where they live or whatever. And so what tends to happen is they become like the sand that gets thrown about everywhere looking for another job, looking for another home, looking for another whatever. And I promise you, if you're not willing to die for something or someone or both, then, then you'll never be satisfied. You hear what I'm saying? That satisfaction only comes when we're willing to commit ourselves unto death. Jesus says there is no greater love He's saying the greatest thing is love. There is nothing greater than love aside from when, and what that looks like is when we're willing to die for someone, for a cause. The world is roaming. The world is lost. You know why? Because it doesn't have a firm enough reason or a why to die for. You know, Jesus showed this, or the gospel show this, when the disciples flee from Jesus as he's being handed over to the Jewish um, police and then over to the Romans. The only person who was there at the cross that we know of by the gospel was John, because Jesus says, John, or this is your mother, and mother, this is your son, and uh, his mom, Mary. Now, we know that the disciples eventually repented and eventually died of martyrdom for the name of Christ. The most expensive wine is the one that takes the longest to ferment. It's actually the one that, in this analogy, is when we're willing to die for something greater than ourselves and we're willing to die for one another. The disciples were eventually willing to die for the sake of Christ. Jesus says to them, you will be at my right and left hand side in all eternity and all glory. Man, I love war movies for many reasons. I got to watch the uh, movie called Active Valor and one um, guy died in there uh, at the end and I cried and I was like, 
and, and, and the, they were having the funeral and during the funeral, his wife was tearing up, but she wasn't sobbing, but she was tearing up, but like honorably. And all the Navy SEALs came up and they stamped their trident on this coffin. It was amazing. And they were like choked up as well. And, and it was just this really sad moment, an intense moment. But, and I was looking at the wife and just the way the Lord was speaking, the Lord can speak to you watching anything, right? And so just the way the Lord was speaking to me, it was like, look at this. And look at the wife. She's not grieving in the way of like sadness and how dare you, I hated this job. She's grieving in a way of like, I knew what he signed up for. I knew he could possibly lose his life one day. I'm honored that I had the time to, to, that he was my husband and that he died for something. He died for his brothers because he jumped on a grenade so his brothers wouldn't be blown up. And I go, that's what I want. I wanna die for something. I wanna die for someone, right? Whether my spouse or my kids or my friends or helping someone, but specifically for Christ, right? I found no greater purpose in life than to die for something or someone, particularly Jesus. And check this out. Everything dies, eventually. Eventually, we all die, right? And we will carry that reputation, what we did in this life, forever. Forever and ever and ever, you will be remembered as the person who ran away, like Judas, for some selfish reason, some selfish cause, jumping from house to house, jumping from job to job, relationship to relationship, you will remember, be remembered as that, or you will be remembered as someone who gave their life for something greater. Whether you were a police officer, or whether you were a firefighter, or whether you were a school teacher, or whether you were a pastor, or a Navy SEAL, whatever it is, those people will be remembered forever, not just here, but in eternity, and then the people who won't be remembered at all are the people who ran away from God, ran away from their calling, ran away from their spouse, ran away. Which one are you? There's still time as long as you and I take breath, right? Until your last breath, would it be for something selfish or would it be for something selfless? And in ministry, I've learned that I have a lot of guys and a lot of people running away because things are hard. There's not one profession in the world that you will find easy. Eventually, you will have a bad day. There's not one person in this world that will be easy aside from Jesus. And if there's a problem, it's you, right? Everyone is hard to get along with at some point or another, right? Every job is hard to do. Even if it turns out to be a passion at first, eventually you'll come across things where you're like, I didn't sign up for this. Well. You got to sign up for something. You got to die for something. Because the last thing that I want, I've done this many times, is run away. I've always run away from people. I've always ran away from spouses or girlfriends, right? It's my first spouse. I've always ran away. I've always ran away from responsibility. Judas Iscariot, like Peter, ran away. Peter repented. All the other disciples repented. Judas stayed away. And I look at the world and I go, there's a lot of Judas spirits out there. And I was one of them. I would say a Peter. I was a Judas, but I can't, became a Peter because I repented and I owned up to my responsibility, right? Which one are you? Are you a Judas or a Peter, right? In this illustration, are you going to keep running away from church to church, running away from when problems happen? Oh, I don't like this job because now there's problems. I don't like this person because now they're a problem, right? Are you going to keep running away? Or are you going to finally plant yourself on the rock, which is, I'm going to die for this. I'm going to die for him or her or this or that. I'm, I'm ready to die. Right? 
That's between the difference between everybody else and a Navy SEAL. The difference between a, an apostle and just everybody else, right? Running away when things get hard. Running away when people hurt your feelings. Not willing to work on it. Don't get me wrong, the other person has their responsibility too. They can run away too. We're not talking about them. We're talking about us. Right? So many people run away when things get hard. When someone needs to get arrested, like Jesus, right? All the disciples ran away. Which one are you? Time will tell which one you are. Oh man, pastor's acting crazy now. I got to get out of here. What happens when you act crazy? And we flee from you. Or you want us to put up with you too, but you're not willing to put up with us. The scriptures say, put up with one another as Christ put up with you, right? I'm looking for another job. Why? Because these people are difficult. People are difficult everywhere. I'm looking for another spouse. Why? Because my spouse is difficult. Spouses are difficult everywhere. And so we got this whole culture running away from their jobs, from their responsibility, from their spouses, because things are hard. You don't think it's equally hard for them to deal with you as it is for you for to deal with them? You don't think it's equally difficult for them to work there as it is for you to work there? Everybody else is having to pick up the load too, just like you. It's difficult for everybody and everybody wants an easy life. But there's no meaning in that. You hear me out? You will never find true value and meaning when you keep running away. I know. I've done it. There's only meaning in life when you finally say, I'm willing to die for this. Amen? Choose something. Choose someone that you're willing to die for. Choose something and choose someone. Stop running away. Does that make sense? And then you will find wholeness and completeness. Push through the tough times with your spouse. Push through the tough times with difficult people. Stop pushing people away. Stop running away from people. Work on it. Work on your relationship. Work on yourself. Right? That's where society is going. That's where eternity is. We serve the same God. The same Jesus. People don't like this God because he doesn't change. People want to change all the time. So they look for a God that changes, right? Sad to say, many Christians do this too. I don't like that God. I don't like that Bible. That's why there's one Bible. It doesn't change. All the Buddhist teachings, they eventually change. They, cha they have to change in all kinds of stuff, right? All the religions of the world are always changing. <laughs> Everything's changing. There's no security in that. And I don't want friendships like that. They're, cha they're always changing. Now we should be changing like Christ. We should be changing for the good, but not like changing and like, oh, I don't know if this person is dependable. We should become more dependable people. We should become more consistent people. Man, I don't want to knock on someone's door, hang out with someone that's always, oh, oh my gosh, like, oh my gosh. Who are you? Who are you going to be today? You have like schizophrenia, right? You change into someone else every five seconds, <laughs> right? I want to know who I'm talking to. Are you really that person or are you going to be somebody else when, when you leave or I leave, <laughs> right? And because their why isn't greater than themselves and your why is greater than yourself when you're willing to die for something or someone greater than yourself. That's the rock. Build your house on the rock. You hear what I'm saying? Stand on something. Stand on a purpose. Build a purpose. If you don't, you don't find a purpose in this world, build one. Right? Find something. Because nobody likes a two-faced person. We are all two-faced from time to time. Some more than others, obviously. But we are looking for someone who's consistent. And that is not, that is a that is a high price commodity. In, commodity in this world that's expensive a person that doesn't change a person who's going to love me through all my crap i want to be that person but i also want be, to be surrounded around those people i am really tired of being around people 
who get offended and then run away. I've done that. Jesus is building a kingdom of people who stand their ground, right? For him, for righteousness, for truth, for his word. That's what the church should represent. That's who we represent. And that's who we should be like, right? The world is always changing. People are always changing. But my kingdom and my king and my God never changes. And I want to be like my king. And I want to represent his kingdom here on this earth. Because that's built on the rock. When the waves of life, when the changes of life, when all the politics of life, when all the trash of life and all everything is changing, it bashes and beats on this rock right here. It's not going anywhere. Amen. That's what that's the kingdom that he's building an eternal kingdom. The kingdom of this world is the sand. It's always changing. It's always being moved. It's always what you see isn't what you get, right? You hear what I'm saying? But his kingdom is what you see is what you get. Man, I don't I don't like surprises all the time. Maybe on Halloween. <laughs> but I don't like surprises aside from Halloween and maybe my birthday. But aside from that, I need 363 days of my year to be on point, you hear what I'm saying? I need my car to start and not just wanna start when it wants to start. I need it to start 365 days a year, <laughs> right? I need friends I can call and be like, hey, how you doing? Or friends that are gonna get, be, get back with me and not lie to me, right? And not show up when they say they're gonna be there unless they have a really good reason, right? I need consistency in my life. Don't you want that too? Well, maybe you don't see that in the world because you rarely will. But can you be that person? The thing about the Navy SEALs is that they can rely on one another. Man, I want to be a man and a husband and a person that people can rely on. I want to be a Navy SEAL for Jesus. Someone, someone can rely on. Amen. And I want to be around other Navy SEALs for Jesus. People that I can rely on. Amen. That's what makes them the top work ethic people in the world the highest performing job in the world there are people that, that are training is designed to weed out the judases to weed out the lazy to weed out the undependable people and every organization is looking for that police departments are looking for reliable people hospitals are looking for reliable people the top performing jobs and fields and organizations in the world are looking for people who are reliable. What you see is what you get. People complain about doctors all the time, right? He wasn't nice to me. Well, he knows his job because I'd rather him know his job than be nice to me personally. I'd rather him be a jerk or her a jerk to me and tell me what's really going on in my body or really fix my body than be nice to me and flatter me like that world, like everybody else, but not know their job and screw something up in my brain or screw something up in my body, right? What's more important, reliability or flattery? <laughs> I think a reliability is important. Because nobody really cares how nice you are. People want to care if you know what you're doing, if you know what you're talking about. Now, it's a double-edged thing if they do, if they are nice, great. But hopefully they're consistent. Hopefully they're reliable. And those are usually people that are willing to die for something. Are you willing to die for something? Because if you're not, you're just gonna be like Judas. You're just gonna show up to church. You're just gonna show up to see what you can get. You're just gonna play the victim, blame everybody. Wah, 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 woe is me, right? And then when things don't go according to your plan, you're gonna dip out and look for another person to screw over. Look for somebody else to use, take advantage of, because you don't have, you're not, you're not committed to anything or anyone. You're not loyal to anything or anyone, right? I'm sick and tired of these kinds of people. They have a chance. Pray for them. I used to be them.
but hopefully we can become that Navy SEAL for Jesus. We can commit ourselves to people and they can depend on us and we can depend on them, right? That's what it means to be like Christ. And you can only become that kind of a person when your house is founded upon the rock, when your meaning in life is for Jesus. Because again, we're all gonna die. Every human being who is living today will die. I'm gonna die, you're gonna die. But what will you die for? Who will you die for, Christ or yourself? Right? And that's it. We're all gonna die, but what will you die for? And I have found that dying for someone or something is greater, it's eternal, it is my purpose, like the tree. Let's just say this was an apple tree. The point of this tree is to grow and to bear fruit, right? And that fruit will fall and this tree will die. Hear me out? This tree is gonna die, just like me. But its purpose is to glorify God, to become the biggest, best tree that it alone can be. Not to compare itself to other trees, but to become the best, best, best tree before it dies and to leave an offspring of fruit like apples that will become it, it as well. That's the whole purpose of our life is to die for something or someone, particularly Jesus. Jesus is calling us all to do something different. Do it the best you can. Die for it every day. Glorify him in whatever he's called you to do every day. Amen. Become the biggest tree in that field that you can be. I'm called to be a pastor. I'm going to be the best pastor that I know I can be. I'm going to study this thing to the bones, right? To the marrow, to the discerning of everything. I'm going to look at it as best I can. I'm going to be the best that I can be. Aside from everybody else, I want to learn everything I can learn about this profession, right? I'm going to die for this. I'm going to glorify my father for this. And if that's not a profession that you like, well, go find something you're willing to die for to glorify our Lord. To become the biggest tree that bears as much apples. The goal of the tree is to bear as much apples or fruit or acorns or whatever as possible so that way when it dies, it stands before God and it goes, I have borne as much fruit and apples as possible. And God says, you've lived your purpose out. Now come into eternal paradise and let's enjoy what you did for me. Amen. Forever and ever. Don't stand in heaven. Don't want to be the person that stands in heaven that just looks back and goes, I did nothing for you except accept you as savior or I did nothing for you. And Jesus says, I don't know you. Or Jesus says, you wicked servant. <laughs> All right? What do you want to be? Who do you want to be? How do you want to glorify your father? You're going to die for something. Right? What will you die for? Who will you die for? The choice is yours. And when you're willing, when you're willing to die for Christ, you're willing to give your life for something greater than yourself, that's when you wake up with joy and purpose every day. That's when you're like, yes, this is it. Yes, you love, you have peace, you have a hope that surpasses this world. There's no greater hope than to live for Christ and to die for him. Amen? There's nothing greater. And so many people are saddened and downtrodden and their countenance, their faces, expressions fallen. You know why? Because they're living for themselves. They're living for something meaningless. They're changing job to job. They're changing profession to profession. They're changing spouse to spouse, friends to friends, church to church. They have no purpose because they have no, nothing greater they're willing to die for. And they're just looking to take, 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 take. Well, they're going to get scolded when they get to heaven, right? Or if they get there. They're like, I don't know you. You just abused people, took advantage of people, sucked every resource that you could from them. You didn't bear your own fruit, right? You didn't become the tree that I wanted you to be. 
You just freeloaded off of everybody. God did not put us here to just consume. He put us here to produce. That one day we could say, I've produced as, as many sermons as possible for you. I produced as, as, as many good works for you, Lord. You did these things through me. And God's always looking. I want, I want to bear as much fruit as I can for Jesus. Right? For the next generation. That's it. Most people probably won't even know who I am on this side while I'm here. But when, before I pass, they'll be like, people will be like, still, they're still finding out teachers that existed back in the day that wrote many books and taught many things. They're like, whoa, and it's now hitting them. I, don't, I, I wanna glorify God with my life and everything I do in my life. I wanna die for something greater than myself, amen? And in that movie, Act of Valor, I loved it because he did his job. He, he laid his life down for his brothers. He bore the fruit. He, he, he really became what we all should desire to become. Amen? He lived his purpose. He became a Navy SEAL for Jesus. And that's a spiritual term I'm using in this me message. That's a little job, right? And that was like, he earned his trident. That was it. He, he, man, and that, that's glory, dude. We're here to glorify our Lord. And there's nothing greater to glorify our Lord than to die for him. Amen. Dying for Jesus as he died for us is the greatest thing. That's what he's saying. There's no greater glory, right? There's nothing in this world that's greater than to die for Jesus. Amen. That's all I got for you. My name is Pastor Jeremy Shines. This is to die for something or someone. I'll say to die for someone in this message. Let's pray. Father, bless this word. Lord, teach us as you have. Father, forgive us. Lord, help us die for someone. Help us die for you, Lord, every day that we might live forever with you in your kingdom. Amen. And God bless.